Hello. So my name is Amanda Giles, and I'm going to be talking about WordPress debugging. And I would love to just get a little bit of sense of who's in the room first. So how many people here build or maintain sites for other people? Okay, so almost everybody. Is anybody in here would consider themselves a WordPress developer? Okay. And of the ones who are developers, like beginning developer, more advanced? Beginner. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. This is perfect then. Great. Uh, so this talk essentially is kind of geared towards non-developers, but beginning developers will get a lot out of it too. And it kind of came about because um, I work with a lot of people who would kind of come to me with errors that they were having, and they were developers, and I would say, well, what did the debug log say? And they would just give me this blank look. Um, so this is a little bit about how to do some basic debugging in WordPress. My name is Amanda Giles. Uh, if you follow that link, um, you will get to the slides. Uh, I'll also post them on Twitter after. Um, yeah. So just a little bit about me and why I feel qualified to talk about WordPress. I've been programming since 1985. I started creating websites in 1995. I've been working with WordPress uh, since 2009, so I just hit my 10-year mark this year. I started the Seacoast New Hampshire WordPress meetup in 2011. Uh, we meet up in uh, Northampton, which is a little bit south of Portsmouth. So if you're on the north side of Boston, I recommend you come check us out. We'll be uh, we're celebrating our ninth year in January. And I've been giving various WordCamp and WordPress meetup talks since 2014. I work for myself, and I also have a WordPress development agency called Spark Development. And my main business is building WordPress themes and sites for people and companies. So a little bit um, background of just kind of what is debugging. It may be a term that you hear thrown around a lot. You may not, you may think you know what it is, you may not. But essentially, debugging is defined as the routine process of locating and removing computer program bugs, errors, or abnormality. And I like this definition from Techopedia because it uses the word routine. Because if you are writing code, you should be routinely checking it for errors. You shouldn't be waiting until somebody reports a bug. You should be, you know, running your code through some stuff and checking that, to see if there are any errors that you're that just aren't visible. If you Google the stages of debugging, you will find several versions of this. So this is my own version modeled on the five stages of grief. Uh, the first stage is denial, must be user error. Did you try clearing your cache? It's working fine for me. Uh, or of course, well that shouldn't happen as if that solves, if that, as if that explains away the, the issue. The next stage is the bargaining. <laughs> well, you know, no one ever uses that feature. We could just hide it. You know, maybe if I upgrade everything, it'll just go away. <clears throat> Finally, you should get to the acceptance that okay, this is something that needs to be fixed. And that is what I refer to as the depression phase. That is when you are knee deep slogging through trying to fix it and it feels like you will never fix it. That's the what's happening here. I'll never get this fixed. I should consider a new career. And then eventually when you solve it, you get to the relief phase of thank goodness. Oh my God, I can't believe. Sometimes it's like, I can't believe it was that easy or I can't believe it's finally fixed or I'll never make that mistake again, which uh, hopefully, if you're paying attention, you will get better and not make the same mistakes. Um, and also, inevitably, sometimes there's the, I should have thought to try that sooner. Uh, so tonight, we're going to try to, I'm going to encourage you to just move past denial and bargaining. Just go right into acceptance. If somebody reports a bug, chances are it is a bug. Um, and we, the goal is to spend as little time in that depression phase as possible. So I'm going to give you some tools and hopefully you can move on to the relief phase faster. That is the more fun part of programming, the part where you feel like you're on top of the world and you made everything right again. Never mind the fact that you might have been the one who broke it. Um, since not many of you are developers, there's a good chance I'm just going to be helping you to figure out whose code broke it and it probably isn't yours. So, so the debugging tools that we're going to talk about today and methodology, I'm going to talk to you a lot about the debug log. It's super important. It gives a lot of great information, and it's, um, it's not that hard to use. I'm also going to talk a little bit about browser tools. That'll be a little more of a demo if we have time. Um, the old standby creating print statements. This is more for the developers. If you are writing code, 
Um, an, an easy way to debug is to spit out output of what you're looking at. And kind of the step beyond that is instead of spitting it out on the screen, to actually write it to error logs. If we have interest, I'm guessing maybe not since we don't have a ton of developers, we can look at debugging plugins such as the debug bar and query monitor. And um, then there are some, some much more advanced debugging tools such as xDebug, which we are not talking about today because this is a 101. So the first two are what we're going to focus on, and these are really tools that anybody can use, and the goal is for them to highlight where the error is, where the issues are. So anytime you have a bug in WordPress, my first recommendation is always to turn on the debug log. You should also turn on the debug log if you're developing, because you probably have some errors in there that you just haven't uncovered yet. And when you do this, all of the errors and the warnings from your PHP code are going to display in this log. And all of WordPress and themes or plugins are made up largely of PHP code. Um, the new Gutenberg block stuff is a little different in that it's got more, it's more React JavaScript, but the traditional core of WordPress um, and most of the themes and plugins that are out there today are largely PHP. Uh, and one big note is to always turn off debugging on your live sites. Um, or if you're done debugging on a live site, if you have to debug on a live site, make sure you turn it off. Um, I feel like I put a bigger warning in here. All right, it's probably coming up. So checking the debug log, um, this is just kind of the process. So we're going to talk about activating the debug log. Then you're going to go visit the page that has the error again. Then you're going to look at the debug log and try to analyze what you see there to pick an action to take. And if that doesn't work, then you're going to repeat steps two to four until you find what does work. Activating the debug log is pretty straightforward. It involves editing the WP config file. So by default, there is a line in there that says WP underscore debug false. And what we're going to do is comment that out by putting a couple of slashes in front of it. And then we put these three lines below it. I've got some comments there. You don't need the comments. You just need the lines that start with define. So the first one is uh, define WP, WP underscore debug true. Now you could just edit the other line, but what happens with me is, especially if I have a site that's problematic and I need to keep going in, I keep these lower lines in there but comment it out. So rather than edit the actual debug flag, I have it in there twice. Once is false and once is true. It enables me to just come in and, and uncomment all of these lines. So that first line is uh, just the flag for debugging. The second line says WB debug display false. That says don't put my errors on the screen. Uh, not a big deal if you're on a, a dev or staging site, but obviously if you have to troubleshoot on a live site, you don't want to be displaying the errors. Um, and then the last one is WP debug log true. This one says put the errors into a log that we can look at. I have it set here as true. You can also actually put a string value there that's relative and define where the debug log will go, but it defaults to WP content debug log. Now, some hosts do do different things with the log. Um, I've worked on flywheel sites before where you have to kind of go into their admin to get the log. Um, uh, Pantheon puts that error log in weird places. You have to kind of go through the structure. So it might vary a little bit for your host. If you're expecting an error and you've turned everything on and you don't see that file created there, then just search through your uh, host's knowledge base and say, you know, looking for the error log or the debug log or get on support and you'll find it. It may be that they're putting it somewhere strange, but it's the same, uh, it'll have the same content in it. So analyzing the debug log is, of course, the tricky part, uh, trying to decipher what you see. These are some of the actions that you might take based on what you see. And uh, for goodness sakes, understand that almost everybody's had the same error before, so it is not a bad thing to Google the error. You don't, wanna, you don't need to Google the exact um, uh, you know, path in your server, but the error that you're having, and particularly if it relates to a certain plugin, by all means, Google some of that in the name of the plugin or something. It might give you some assistance. But basically, from what you see, you could decide to deactivate a plugin if you can. You can tell what plugin it's coming from, which you should be able to. You might try upgrading the plugin or WordPress core. You might find the error related to a plugin and decide to check the support threads for that particular plugin. You might even contact the plugin developer themselves or theme developer. 
If you are a developer, you might try fixing the code yourself. Um, this one, obviously, if it's code you're getting from, if it's a plugin that's on your site and you go and edit the code, understand that it's going to cut, next time you upgrade the plugin, you're gonna lose those changes. So you need to be aware of what you're doing, but maybe you wanna to try to fix the bug and then notify the plugin developer about how you fix the bug and maybe they'll put it in the next uh, version. You might, um, if you're getting a PHP error, you might need to change the PHP version on your hosting account, particularly when uh, we've made this big push to PHP 7.0 and later, there are things, particularly in 7.2 and 7.3, there are functions and way of writing, ways of writing things that have fallen out of favor, and if you have an older plugin on your site, the error that you're getting might in fact be related to the PHP version. So the short-term fix might actually be to roll back the PHP version, um, or to roll it back and then contact the plugin developer, find out if there's a later version, or even replace the plugin. It, frankly, if it's not being updated and it's not up to date with the current version of PHP, there's probably other things that are kind of slipshod with the plugin, or just over time, security holes and things um, that you probably don't want to risk having that on your account. Um, and then another action you might take is increasing the PHP memory limit if you see uh, an error that looks like that. So, this is where we put a little bit of our detective hats on. I don't know if you can actually. I guess you can, it's not too bad. So I don't know if you can see this, but this is a sample line and a debug log that you might see. So this one says undefined variable args in, and it gives a whole path, and it gives an actual, you can see, um, it gives the actual file name, and it gives the exact line number. So this is the part where, like, if you're industrious, you could, you know, if you're comfortable doing so, you can actually use this information, go to this settings.php file, look at line 258, it's a great way to learn how to program and learn maybe what not to do. Um, and there's a chance that you might be able to go in there and just solve the, the problem. I inherit themes <coughs> all the time from people who stopped coding and they've just used, they've just done some sloppy coding that used to be okay or they've used some kind of PHP function that's gone away. Um, so in this case, you might actually, you might go and edit it. You could also get an upgrade to the theme if you, maybe the theme is five years old and they have a new version. So that's another possibility. But because you can see the path there, you can see specifically it's in the themes folder and it's the theme polka dash dot. So that gives you um, the idea of where it is. Obviously changing the theme usually isn't an option, but it, upgrading the theme could be, or if it's abandoned, fixing the theme yourself or hiring somebody to fix it uh, could be. So this is a somewhat longer example. This, um, and I actually just cut it off at the bottom. But this case says PHP fatal error, uncaught Google auth exception, and it gives all of this text, and then it starts giving this stack trace of where it's going. Um, and I and I've changed the I've changed the text to protect the innocent. But this is from a, a client who called me in a panic a week or two ago. And when I looked at this one, I was able to figure out okay, it's this particular plugin. Um, I actually tried putting it on a, a a brand new site to see if it was an issue, and it wasn't. So there was some kind of conflict or something going on. But I was able to look at this and say, okay, it's plugins, Google Analyticator, I know what plugin it is. So I was able to go and deactivate the plugin, do the whole thing again, visit the page again, check the debug log, to, debug log. did I have a new copy of this error? Um, you can check the timestamp or you can just delete the log and then visit the page again to, as I said, repeat that process. And once I deactivated this plugin, the error went away. So at that point, I was at least able to tell the client, look, I'm not even sure you're using this plugin because I, it actually didn't look like it was set up. But if you are, here's this other plugin I installed, and you can activate it and authenticate with Google Analytics. I did verify that their Google Analytics code was still on the site, so all they were possibly missing from this was maybe some filtering of not logging admin users, or maybe some reporting that they could see right in the dashboard. But at least on the live site, I was able, you know, within 15 minutes to just deactivate the plugin, get everything working again, and get them. In this case, the problem was when they were editing posts. The front end of the site was fine, but they were trying to put up new, new conference data, and they couldn't. So, again, I, I didn't need to know how to code this to see it. I needed to just read the debug log, see where the source was, and then you can have a solution. Even if it's not the end solution, it can at least be the solution to get you on until you find a more permanent solution. 
Uh, the third example I've got here is uh, one that you see a lot sometimes if you're doing imports or exports or anything with a lot of data crunching. This one says, fatal error, allowed memory size of blah, 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 exhausted. So this basically means that PHP has run out of memory uh, on the server or run out of the memory that's been allocated to it. And this is something that you can set in the WP config, although some hosts control that a little more tightly. So I've got a link there to how to fix it, but basically you put something in WP config, it either works or it doesn't. If it doesn't, then you can contact your host to support and have them help you out. It could be something that you can set in cPanel, or it could be something that they tightly control, or it could be that you're on a really bad web host, not like A2, one of our sponsors, uh, they might need a new web host. So, we won't name names. Uh, so, checking browser tools. Uh, actually, just so before I move on, uh, questions about the debug log? The general process, okay. Not that you're gonna be an expert today, but I want you to feel comfortable to turn it on and look at it and know that you can look at it without hurting anything. Just don't leave the debug file on the server, that's all. And not even so much the file, but don't leave it on because the file will get huge. Because not only errors go in there, but just warnings go in there. So when PHP is about to, to uh, take a function out of use, they, it's called uh, when you deprecate a function, um, for a couple versions beforehand, they'll give you a warning. So every time that function is called, you'll get a warning in there, and it's fine. It's not necessarily a big deal, but the log will fill up. Uh, so browser tools are something on the front end. They give you a little bit of a different view. They don't allow you to troubleshoot the PHP errors, but they do allow you to troubleshoot some of the more front end aspects of the site. So if you're looking specifically for like a display issue, something's not displaying right, maybe the color isn't taking, or the font size that you thought would, would take, you can right click and inspect something, and that should bring up your developer tools, which also come up with F12. And this is a way for you to look at the front end of your site. It lets you look at the HTML, the CSS, you can even look at the JavaScript. Um, there's all sorts of other things in developer tools, like there's a um, you can see how long things are taking to load, and you can see how many scripts you have, and you can see what kind of cookies your site's putting on there. So there's, there's more than we're going to cover tonight, but just know that there's a, there's a wealth of tools in there. The element is in inspector is the one that you would use for these sorts of display oh. issues. And when you hit inspect, this is what comes up, um, is a box that looks like this. This is what it looks like in Chrome. It looks a little different in Microsoft browsers, it looks a little different in Firefox, but they all operate pretty similarly. So this, you can, um, across the top are basically the uh, different tabs that you can click on. So it opens up the Elements one, I think in Firefox called Inspector, it's the first one on the left. And on the left side we have all of our HTML for the site, and then when you inspect a particular element, it'll go right to the element. So right now, this screenshot that I took is actually on the body class, but if I had inspected uh, an H1 header that I had on my page, it would actually still show all of the HTML, but it would show that specific tag. And then on the right-hand side, I can see all of the styles that are applied to that tag. So in the case of trying to troubleshoot whether a style is taking place, what it shows you on the right-hand side is the styles that are applied, and it's showing them to you in priority. So the ones at the top are the most recently applied, and the ones that are below are, um, some of them are applied, but some of them may be overwritten by a more, um, a, by a higher priority style. And we don't have time to go all the way into CSS today, but basically CSS is short for cascading style sheets. And one of the, the reason that it says cascade is that these styles can be more or less specific to be written, and also what order they appear in the browser. And, styles can take priority by being more specific um, or less specific. So this helps you if you're the style you think should be being applied is, is further down and you can see that there's a style further up that's overwriting it. Um, that gives you an idea of um, what that other style is. You can look at how specific that is and use that as a guide for making your style declaration more specific or maybe changing the order of how your files are coming in. Um, there's all sorts of options there. And the JavaScript console, this is the second tab in. This will show you errors that come up in JavaScript. And sometimes it shows you warnings. 
Hopefully you look in here and you see a clean white tab and there's nothing there. Um, this particular site, I actually pulled in, um, I pulled in actually the WordPress like theme testing unit data and uh, it just wasn't very happy on a page with a bunch of embeds. So the stuff in red are errors, the stuff in yellow are warnings. You'll also, you'll see different warnings on Chrome versus Firefox because those browsers are processing that JavaScript differently. And Chrome gives you a lot of these warnings about things that might be happening that maybe aren't issues yet, but they give them to you to be aware. If I looked at this same page on Firefox, I wouldn't be seeing the same issues. So it's something to keep in mind when you're troubleshooting as well, if um, to always check in with, if you're not the one seeing the error, if your client is seeing the error or visitor, find out what browser they're on. <laughs> find out what version of that browser. Sometimes, you know, I've had, uh, sometimes Google changes things and it breaks stuff and then two versions later they tweak it back or, so it's, it's uh, very important, but pretty much universally on browsers, if you hit F12, you will get to these developer tools. And again, they can be a, a they can keep kind of be a sea of text that means nothing, but you'll see over on the right hand side, there's typically a path. So <clears throat> this top one where it has an error, it's actually an error with Instagram. And I think it's actually really more about it not loading SSL on a non-SSL site or something like that. But if it was a script on your site, you could actually click into it and say, oh, that's a JavaScript file from my ABC plugin that I just added to the site. And you would know again, oh, let me try deactivating that plugin. Okay, is that thing working now? Um, so again, just a tool, maybe not to fix it, but maybe to know to deactivate and then find another solution long term. This is a whole other, we could get lost in this, but it's just something to be aware of. It's a t another tool for you to try to narrow down what's happening. Oh, that's where that slide is. So the reason you never leave the debug flag on your site is, is this happened to me once. We left the debug flag on accidentally, it happens. And then, um, and then the backup started failing. And wouldn't you know it, the debug.log log file was two gig. And so it just kept timing out when it was trying to do the backups. Um, so we've never done that since. And hopefully I've saved you the headache of that. Um, so this is a little more towards developers. One of the very kind of like intro ways to debug don't really want to do it on a live site, but it very easily is just to do print statements to the screen. And I say print statements because depending on the programming language, that's typically what they were called. Um, in PHP, you don't typically use the word print, but these are, this practice is that within your code that you're writing, so your custom theme or your plugin, the idea is that you are adding statements that are going to print out the values of variables or functions to assist you in your troubleshooting. So you're like, gosh darn it, I could swear that post ID was 39, and you know, it's, it's not happening here. Um, so it's a really, uh, it's just a super easy, low tech way to check these values and see what's happening. It's, I still really only recommend it for people who are comfortable in PHP. You need to know where you're sticking these statements, you need to understand what you're trying to track. It, it's useful if you understand PHP and you're trying to figure out what's happening. Um, it's usually done on code you've written, but sometimes you do it on code other people have written. I've certainly gone into plugins that people have written and, you know, put some code in to try to figure out, like, what exactly is here for me to look at, why is the value that I'm expecting not there. Um, I don't recommend doing this on a live site because print statement, uh, when I say print statement, I mean it's going to output it onto your web page for anybody to see. Um, unless you wrap it in some kind of like display none, unless you're admin or something. Um, but it is the simplest way to debug as you are just reflecting the stuff on the screen. Um, it's super quick. You don't have to turn on the debug log, but it, it's not your ideal. But it, it is a quick and dirty uh, way to debug. So your print statements, uh, your simplest one is just going to be echo. Echo just prints something right out on the screen. You can echo a string, you can ex echo a variable. It's just gonna, you know, sometimes I put these statements in because I'm like not convinced I'm getting through all my if-then logic. And I'm just like, okay, did I make it here? Did I make it here? Did I make it here? And once I figure out how far I'm making it, then I know like where to narrow down. Uh, so a step above that is a var underscore dump. 
and then I'm, in this case I'm dumping a post ID. I could echo the post ID. Var dump does me a little better because it gives me the value that I have stored in my post ID variable, and it will also tell me the type that PHP is associated with it. So it'll tell me if it thinks it's a string or an integer, which, although PHP is very loose with typing and comparisons, can cause an issue if it's a post ID, but it's a string value, and you're expecting it to be a numeric value, what you're trying to do might not be correct. So var dump is, is just a step above for that. Um, now, if your variable is an array, for instance, the post um, object uh, throughout WordPress is an array of values, um, you can still use var dump, but you want to put this print r statement in. And what print r does is spits out all of the elements of the array in a really nice format so you can see what's the key, what's the value, and because it's var dump, it's going to give you all the types as well. And that second argument, true, is just telling printr not to echo it to the screen right away, but to pass it back to var dump so var dump can then go and add all of your type information, which you might not need, but again, it's, it's more information is better if you're going to write a statement in there. And then this last statement is just um, you can take any of these other statements if you want and wrap them in, a, in, a, in the function die, uh, which sounds severe, but it basically is just telling uh, WordPress to just stop after it echoes out that, that content. Like, just don't run anything more. I don't need to know anything more. I'm just trying to debug it. Um, don't, spe don't waste my time. Just give me the value and then cut out. So, pretty straightforward. Error logs are really just a step above that. Basically, all the same things, but we're going to put them in that log that we already looked at. So within your theme or plugin code, you can add the same kind of statements, but instead of putting them on screen, you'll put them in the debug log. Uh, again, only recommended if you're comfortable with PHP. You really don't want to be editing your theme functions.php or in your plugins if you're not. And again, usually done in code you've written, but you can do it on other people's code, and it can be very helpful to figure out what they were doing, especially if it's not commented. Um, and if you have to troubleshoot on a live site, which total, which does happen, um, this is a way that you can do it without interfering with normal visitors. So these examples should look really familiar, in, except that I'm using the function error underscore log. And it's going to expect a single value again, so I can send it a string, I can send it a variable. <coughs> if I have an array, I can use that same print r function, which is going to take all the elements of my array, just make them really pretty, puts one per line, makes it very easy to read, and my error log is just going to put that into the error log instead of on screen. And again, I can use die afterwards just to, just to not run any more code. Especially if you have errors further down, and you want to maybe just focus on one at a time, it can also be helpful for that. JavaScript's a little different. Uh, obviously, you won't be in the PHP files. You would be in the JavaScript. But JavaScript has a very similar function, console.log. That's going to write to those dev tools to that console that we looked at. So errors come up there, but you can actually just spit out helpful values. Like if you're trying to work on a responsive design, and you're like, what is my screen width at this weird point? Um, you can say console.log and um, <coughs> echo or print that value into the log, again, you're not going to be interfering with a regular visitor. I mean, if they look at the JavaScript log, they can see it. So don't, you know, don't output social security numbers or something in there, something weird. Um, but, you know, if they look in your debug log, they get what they get. Uh, every once in a while, I've hit F12 on, a, on a, a site out there and had it be like, hey, you're a developer, we're hiring, with the whole, like, <laughs> comments in there. So you can put kind of cheeky stuff in there. If somebody's looking in there, um, you know. They're curious, or they hit a key by accident. There are some debugging plugins you can use. Uh, these are these are really for developers. They're not going to give a lot of value if you're not a developer, because they really let you go even further into the nitty gritty of what um, is up there. And all of these are links. So I have the slides posted on my site, and you can click on them. Um, but pretty quickly, the developer plugin. Uh, it's a funny plugin, has, I mean, it hasn't been updated in a while, but it hasn't really needed it. The developer plugin literally is just a list of like 15 plugins that are helpful if you're a developer, and it just gives you a screen and says, do you want to install any of these? And so rather than installing them one by one, you can say click, 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 pick and choose the ones you want, and then it will add them for you. 
The debug bar is a fantastic plugin and it has a whole bunch of add-ons. Um, some of them written by some of them, I think, written by the original developers, and then some of them written by a whole bunch of other people. But it, at its core, the debug bar gives you some basic information, and then you can add on these other add-ins to see other things. So if you want to see queries, you can add on a query add-on. If you want to see cron jobs, which are scheduled tasks that run in WordPress, you, there's a plugin for that. I saw one the other day called Slow Actions, where it'll tell you your slowest, not so much your slowest queries, but like the slowest hooks that they're associated with. Again, it's a more of an advanced thing. Query Monitor has a lot of overlap with Debug Bar, but it really breaks down every query that's being written and how long it's taking and where it's being called from and what hook and, and, and you can get lost in there. But if that's what you need to do to figure out what's going on, it's a, it's a super tool. You don't really want to run either of those on a live site. So if you're at the point where you need Debug Bar or Query Monitor, you know, do yourself a favor, create a staging copy of your site. You know, if it's server specific, you can probably still do it on your same server, put it on a subdomain or something. And WP Control is another great uh, classic WordPress plugin that just shows you um, your WordPress schedule events, what's hooked to them, what the schedules are. It's more if you're troubleshooting um, a, a timing thing that's happening. So if you have maybe every day certain like past events are supposed to be deleted or something. This would be an event where you could go in and see, is it scheduled to run properly? Is it running? Um, it just gives you insight to that kind of behind the scenes, under the hood stuff. A couple other quick resources, uh, debugging in WordPress, that's from the actual, I think it's the Theme Developer Handbook or the Codex. It's got a lot of great information uh, overlapping with what I've showed you here. And uh, the second piece is from WP Beginner, and it's great. It's 40 most common WordPress errors and how to fix them. Um, and it's, it's pretty decent. They seem to keep it up to date, so it's a, it's a helpful thing. Um, where WordPress runs, you know, whatever, 35% of the top 10 million sites on the internet now, just about any error you've had, somebody has probably had it. Um, unless it's super new because it's related to the new version of WordPress. Um, even if somebody hasn't had it with a specific plugin, they might have had it with a different plugin, they might have a solution. So um, Google is your friend a lot of these times. Um, how are we doing on time? We do on yeah, 12. 15 minutes. Okay. So we can end it there. I could show you a little bit about the inspector dev tools if you want. Um, but I don't want to keep you too late. Or I can just stay and hang out for people who do want to see and not bore the rest of you. It's a democracy. It's okay. Do you want to? I want to just show, like, show them aside and show okay. them how to find the inspect. Okay. So, oh. let me close this up first. All right. Uh, so this is a brand new site. I put the WP theme, template theme testing, unit testing data on it. And it's the 2020 theme, which is my first time actually looking at it. Um, so if I wanted to just see the inspector, I can hit F12, and it comes up. Um, not very helpful in its own. Let's say I wanted to see why this element is styled this way. I can right click on it and say inspect. And this brings me into the same view. Let me try making this a little bigger for you guys. Um, this brings me into the same view, and you can see here it's an H2, it's got uh, an anchor tag inside it, and then I can see over on the right hand side, I can see the styles being applied. So the color is black, if I scroll down, you can see there's another style down here that says color inherit, and it's overwritten at it, so it shows it crossed out. So what that shows me, it tells me is, that style is not being applied because something else superseded it. If I scroll down even further, I can see that there's actually a red styling that would have applied in different areas of the site. And this is, um, this is a lot of CSS, but you can, see, um, you can see how that's probably the same red that's applied to these links. So by default, those links are red, but then um, if we scroll back up, we see this 
if you have entry title in A, though, then we apply color inherit. And then if you go up above that, uh, we apply this black color. So it's a way of kind of seeing what's applied. You can also, um, sometimes the thing about the inspector is if you have some HTML elements that are malformed, let's say that your client decided to paste some HTML into the post editor, always a bad idea if they're not using a code block or something. Um, it, the element inspector will actually try to clean up your HTML, so it will sometimes look neat in here, but it's actually missing a tag. Um, but you can right click on here um, and say edit as HTML, and it'll usually give you a better picture there. Sometimes it's still kind of wrap stuff up, you can still go and do view source if you need to look at the actual source. It's just kind of a gotcha that sometimes the uh, the inspector likes to wrap things up nice and neatly and occasionally that means it obscures the fact that you're missing some kind of closing tag somewhere. If I want to see specifically what is applied without scrolling through all those styles, uh, over on this side, I was on the styles tab, I can click on computed and it gives me, um, this is in Chrome, um, but Firefox is similar. It gives me, um, tells me a little bit about the size of the element. And then if I scroll down here, it basically shows me all of the properties that are here. And here I can also see the priority. So if I scroll down and I see, oh, there's my black color. I can click this arrow and I can see these different styles that are being applied. <coughs> Um, and if I want to see that actual CSS, I can click on this link, and now it actually like, opens up into the CSS file, which, because it's been minified, is really hard to read, um, although it does have an option here. Preprint. see, will that do it? Uh, I don't know. Um, so harder to dissect there just because it's all been like, compressed. Um, the console tab here, Oh, that was interesting. There wasn't an error there before, but now it does have an error. Um, yeah, it's not a very specific error, it's just for the whole page. But if I open up, if I open up the same page over in Firefox here, so Firefox, I also open the inspector, you can see the format is a little bit different. This is the same exact page. When I go and click on console here, it actually has an error right at the beginning saying a type error, uh, document.body is null. I don't have to know what that means, but, it, but it, it's a clue. I can click to expand. It's red, so I know it's an error. When I expand it, it's actually telling me, oh, it's actually a JavaScript file in the 2020 theme. And then if I click on this link over here, if you look closely at it, it says index.js, and then it has a colon, and it says 83, and then it says 3. So it's line 83, <coughs> and if I click in there, and it's the third character. So this is line 83 here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Um, so it's giving me an error on this line, which is line 83, and you can probably see from there that that document starts at the third character in, because there's three spaces. So I may not know what to do about this, but I know where the error came from. So again, maybe the option is changing the theme, but if this was a plugin, it might be, I want to change the plugin. It could be, you know, again, and it, this is interesting because this doesn't happen in Chrome. So it's a little different, uh, uh, I'm not sure why Firefox gives that error. But the browsers are very, the browser is very, the browser and the inspector are very, uh, they're browser specific. The PHP errors that we're looking at are on the server side. So all of the PHP processing error that happens, happens on your web host and then gets delivered as this HTML, CSS, JavaScript to your browser. So um, that's, I think, one of the trickiest things that I can't really explain to you in a nutshell is where to look. So if you're getting an error, you're just going to have to kind of look at both. Look at the JavaScript log, look at the PHP, you'll get a sense over time from what's happening, what kind of error it probably is. Um, Sometimes things don't happen until you click on them. So if you have a button and nothing's happening, you can open up the JavaScript console and then click on the button again and then see what it says. So it might not give an error when you load the page, but with JavaScript, because it's so dynamic, it might give an error once you do the thing that's happening. It could be just scrolling the page. 
or changing the size of the browser or clicking on something that actually causes um, a JavaScript error to occur. Um, you can also do this in the admin. So sometimes I get weird stuff with like advanced custom fields or other plugins acting funky in the admin. And you can bring up the JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript console in the admin too. You can't necessarily fix anything, but you can maybe get an idea of where your conflict is coming from. Maybe you have a, a, a function with the same name in two different JavaScript files that are that are <coughs> an error. Um, and let me just show you real quickly what the um, what the debug plugins look like. Oh, so this is my WP config. So if I actually turn on debugging, I'll see errors in the log. Um, I'm also going to turn on an additional flag called save queries. And this is one that the debug bar, query console, and query monitor use. And they have comments about turning it on, so you don't have to remember. But if I activate the debug bar, and then I go to the site, let me close this, oops, front end of the site. I have this bar up here that says debug, and then I can click that. Because I have save queries on, I get this additional query information. Um, but it gives you all kinds of things. I can see it has the name of my machine up there. It tells me what version of PHP, what version of MySQL, how much memory. Um, I don't know why it says please enable that, because I have it enabled. Um, it tells me how many queries. And the, the query time, I don't really have anything on this site, so there's not any, anything very long. I can scroll down here and I can see how much time the queries take. Um, there are some other tools that will tell you if you run duplicate queries. I think Query Monitor tells you that one. Uh, WP Query, this isn't very interesting because I'm on the front page, but if I switch to another page, I would see the post information that's coming on. Oh. Request, object cache, this is more kind of under the hood stuff. If I activate, where is it? No, oh, I thought I had the, uh, all right, we'll activate query monitor and deactivate. Uh, so if I go back to the site, close this out. Just <coughs> load this up again. Now I get this bit up here. This is how Query Monitor shows up. And it has a bunch of uh, data as far as the time. And then when I click in, it's got a whole window down here where I can see queries. Um, I can actually sort here. So this is really helpful. You can actually sort. Obviously, none of these queries have a lot of data in here. But I can see what's my most time extensive query if my page is taking a while to load. I can see my duplicate queries. Queries by caller, so these are by the functions that they're being called in. So most of these are WordPress default functions, but I can click in, it'll show me queries. I can see the scripts that are loaded. Um, it gives you a bunch of the hooks, so if you are a developer and you're looking at uh, where things are happening and what order, this is very helpful. But again, if you're not, you know, if you're not a PHP developer, this is probably more data than you want to analyze, but it is, it is there if you, uh, if you need it. And, uh, it's like transients and all that. So. So yeah, so that is your quick debugging 101, and I hope that you are able to go forward and turn on the debug a lot on your site and, and see what's going on. Thank you very much.